these angels, they look down on us and they say, what is this man that you are mindful of them? What is this son of man that you visit them? Why? For what? All we see is something worthy of death. But where the angels may see death, where man may see death, God sees life. The angels cannot see what God sees. They may have heard of the story of creation, but they didn't understand it to its fullness because the spirit has blocked them from that rationale. How do we know that they're blocked from that rationale? Because a majority of them was deceived by Satan and his devices. If they knew about the spirit and the power of God, it wouldn't even have come into their minds. You see, this spirit that lives within us is not being edified. We're not being fed the right foods. We're being taught that it's okay to sin. It's okay to live a lifestyle of sin. But God is not about that life. Could you imagine he brings one man, raises him up as a child, born in the womb of a woman to prove every single person wrong, every pastor, every bishop, every elder wrong that, that says that sin is something that will continue to control us. Well, he did that. He brought Jesus. Jesus is different. He was born the same way you were born. He listened to the same word that you have to listen to. He has to believe and he has to crucify that flesh the same way you have to through fasting and praying. He was tempted the same way you are tempted, but he came out triumphant. And Jesus gave us a word. He says, you don't need to be greater than the master. You just need to be like him. God does not care about your flesh more than he cares about the spirit. It says in the word of God in John 4 that we must serve God in spirit as well as in truth. Because we learn later on God is a spirit. And so he doesn't want you to serve him in the flesh. He's not about the flesh. He's not in flesh. He's spirit. So then we learn about how we need to try the spirit with the spirit to see if they be of God. But why do we think we serve God in the flesh then? We must serve him in the spirit. How do we serve him in the spirit if the spirit is not edified? How do we serve him in the spirit when the spirit's not renewed? How do we serve him in the spirit when the spirit's not being fed? You see, I could just speak this word, but the spirit is not attaining to it. The flesh gets tired and weary. The flesh begins to yawn. The flesh is already tired. But when you hear a man preaching the word of God with conviction, using the spirit of God, you're attuned. Ask God to open you up to his spirit. We've heard that in the Bible. So that means we're shut off from his spirit simply because we're not drawn an eye unto him, simply because our attention is not on him and his ways and his goals and his mannerism and his direction and how he wants us to live. We take one of those things and we say, oh, we've got God. We're servants of God. We're Christians. We're sons and daughters of God. Just because we take one aspect of God. Oh, well, I go to church. But during the workplace, you're gossiping about this person and the other. You want this person to fall on the other. You want that person to die. You want this person to get into an accident. At a fountain, there cannot be brought forth at the same place bitter and sweet waters. That's not there to bring you down. It is there to contradict your way of thinking. But God, I'm nice. But God, I'm good. But God, I'm kind. But you have bitterness spewing out of you. In the same place, sweetness should abide. 
women and men, children alike, if you are having something in your life that is wrong, don't stop serving God. Don't stop at your imperfections. Go to God, fast unto God. Let that imperfection be gone. God says, I'm coming back for a repaired church, one without spot, one without wrinkle. That very blemish in which you have, you have to remove it in the name of Jesus. You cannot remove anything that you think is all right. You ever have a shirt? And it may have just a stain. You've washed it time and time again. Cold water. And you said, well, the stain didn't come out. I'm still going to wear it. You go out. You don't see anything wrong with it. You go to the store. You go to a restaurant. You may even go out with your wife on a date. And you never think anything's wrong with that shirt until someone looks at it. And the way that they look at it, you know they're looking at that one spot, that one blemish that you forgot about. They judge you as someone dirty. They judge you as someone defiled. They judge you as someone who doesn't know any better. But I'm here to tell you, because of that one blemish, they judge your whole character. Why do you think it's any different when you come and serve God? Take care of that blemish. Add some hot water. If you know you had a blemish and it was not removed, you know that the problem is not you. That blemish has to be removed or you have to get a new shirt. So what does that mean? Maybe it's just the process in which I'm washing that is not doing any good to take away this blemish. So what do I need to do? Instead of washing it with cold water, I wash it with hot water. Instead of using a little bit of Tide, I'll use much. If it's a white shirt, maybe I need to actually buy bleach. Now you see the spot is gone. What you thought was impossible is possible because God had already given you the tools. You just never used it. And the reason why you never use it is not because you didn't believe. It was because you accepted the blemish for what it is. If you accept these people within your life for who they are, living in sin, it's only a matter of time till you start doing sin. If you believe that your children are doing wrong and you can't speak to them and it's okay for the wrong that they're doing, it's only a moment of time till it comes after you. Get the blemish out. Get the wrinkle out so that when someone looks at you, they don't see anything wrong. They see the continence. They see the wisdom. They see the understanding of someone that has found Christ. And through Christ, he brings us to God. God bless.